Data architecture, using a data dictionary for planning before you set up in Salesforce. Welcome to another session of data architecture. Today I'm going to show you an interesting concept that I've used at many, many different projects. So you're in the design phase of hearing the requirements of a project and you need to take into account what's out of the box Salesforce and what are the custom requirements. And instead of going in and out of a Salesforce org, what I've done is I've brought all the specific fields from the, my key objects, my accounts, my contacts, even my users, and I put them in a data dictionary. This is an Excel spreadsheet, actually a Google Sheet. And from there, once I have them, when I'm doing my detailed design, I start to model the application in my data dictionary. So I'm storing the, I have the standard objects, standard fields, and I start specifying what are my custom fields? What are my custom objects? And in fact, I've done entire service cloud implementations where I don't even touch Salesforce and I plug in all the details of the case assignment rules, the escalation rules, the milestones. I map everything in a spreadsheet. I get it all dialed in and then I just plug it into the Salesforce org and I'm done. And it, it allows me to catch things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the basics of using a data dictionary and show you how you can use it to plan. I've also found that as I'm getting diving into data cloud, you need to do a lot of planning ahead of time. And data cloud actually kind of almost requires that you do this mapping ahead of time. So I believe getting all the details worked out before you start plugging them into Salesforce can be key. So we're gonna be showing you a data dictionary in a spreadsheet, but how it can map out a Salesforce implementation. So here is a sheet template that I have created and I have lots of tabs. I'm gonna have my tables. And in this one, account, case, contact, user, are the out of the box standard objects that I've mapped. And then I start to map in any custom objects. So if I have order, let's say it's a custom object, and order item. So we'll go special order and order items. Now what I do is I have brought across all the fields on the key objects, account, case, contact, and user and I can start to decide whether we're gonna use it at the client. So I can decide at the field level whether we're gonna use the name, the owner, the site, and what I can start doing is specifying which fields are being utilized. The next thing I can do is I can go insert one row, and so let's assume I take this account, and I can start adding custom fields. So this field can be a custom for the account and it could be like Steve special field one. I can give it my label. I designate the data type. Let's say it's a text, 200. Now, if I create another field account Or let's assume what I do is I have my or I have my order. What I can do is I can put in order, and it's going to be a custom field used by the client. And then we're going to go parent account, parent account, and I can actually make it a I've actually pre-programmed the validations here for my data dictionary. I can make it a lookup. And over here, you'll see that it's picking up the lookups from the other tab. So now it's gonna be a lookup to account. And I can put in things like the description, any particular pick list, record types. I can even start putting in the help text and whether it's required or history tracking needs to be on. So what I've got is, a, and then eventually I can flag it to what profiles 
and now permission sets. So what I can start doing is I can start building my data model in this spreadsheet where I'm listing my custom objects and my standard objects. I can then put in my fields and they, with these lookups, I can actually be linking to the objects that I've defined. I can define pick list like a special one. I can make it custom pick list. It's going to be a global pick list. And then I can pick the special one and go to pick list values, value one. value two. And now that I've created this special pick list, I can then add a field on order, custom, and I'm going to go pick list, pick list. This I can flag as a pick list and actually slide over here and flag it here. So what I'm actually doing is, although I'm not in Salesforce, I am designing the standard objects with custom fields, the custom objects, and I'm even mapping my pick lists, either my object specific pick lists or my global pick lists. And I build a cohesive solution that I design before I even get to Salesforce. I can, in the days when we would need record types, or page layouts, list views. Things I'll also track would be my validation rules, um, flows, groups. When I was doing case management, I would put any of my public groups, any of my case queues, email alerts, email templates, my sharing rules. I would start to be building my role hierarchy here. So I'd be building my role hierarchy listing my reports and dashboards, and bringing my fields. So a key element of this is the tables and the fields. You can even use quick filters. And we're gonna go clear, account. And this way I can see all of my account fields. And what I've done is I brought in all the standard fields from Salesforce and brought them into the spreadsheet. So this data dictionary allows me to build a full comprehensive solution across objects, fields, pick lists. I can even get down to the screens and I can map everything out and essentially just hand it, either plug it in myself or hand it to a developer or configurator who can then plug it in and it works beautifully. So I believe that as the systems are starting to get more complex, before you go into Salesforce, you may need a data dictionary that you can then use. And what I've done with multiple teams is when I make a change, if I add a field that I will go and flag the field, let's say with a yellow, that indicates that it's been added to the data dictionary. And when it is actually added into the dev org and committed into the code branch, then we come back later and we reset the color. So this can be a vehicle of communication, which is a shared spreadsheet, making changes in design, and then clearing out the colors when it makes it actually into your dev org and your source code control. So this can be a great mechanism, We've used it on countless projects. And whenever you get into a detailed field level, your data dictionary can be key. I just wanted to share this approach. So if you're working on a project of any complexity and you cannot be making your changes straight in Salesforce and trying to keep up, a data dictionary can be a key element. And I find myself using this even on the simple project up to the complex projects. I'll use like a shared Google Sheet that I can have multiple development and design team members working on and we'll make our annotations in the spreadsheet. And once it makes it to Salesforce, we clear out the colors and then we can catch the, disc, the, the deltas very quickly. So I think this is a really good approach um, and I just wanted to share it. I hope it's helpful. Thank you for joining, planning ahead. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. 
YouTube, Steve Tech Arc, and www.stevetecharc.com. Thank you very much.